Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings. Oh, Indiana Jones. The chiseled and grizzled globe-trotting adventurer that captured the hearts and minds of moviegoers throughout the world. Every dude wanted to be him and every dudette wanted him. And you can clearly see why. He's a cool cat who don't play by the rules, but he's also a kind-hearted hero who always saves the day. And if you think about it, the character is just perfect for video games. Indy's adventures are always straightforward stories with a single end goal, they take them to several unique locations throughout the world, and they always feature plenty of fights, death traps, chases, and other dangerous situations. Hmm, what does this sound like? A fucking video game, that's what! And so to nobody's surprise, they made a metric fuckton of Indiana Jones games dating all the way back to the Atari 2600. Though most of them were complete trash, there were a few games that were actually received pretty well, like the Scum Engine Adventure games, the Lego games, and the two original 3D action games, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine, and Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. These last two games were actually pretty good for being complete Tomb Raider ripoffs. Which is weird, because Tomb Raider's kind of an Indiana Jones ripoff. But what many of you may not know is that there was originally supposed to be a third one of these on Xbox 360 and PS3. It was demoed to the world at E3 2006 to showcase LucasArts' newfangled Euphoria game engine. It was a revolutionary AI and physics system that allowed for more dynamic combat, meaning you'd never see the same thing twice. Euphoria! This newfangled biomechanical AI will give the world a never-before-seen game experience. You, the player, will be able to experience the same danger and excitement of the real Indiana Jones. Look how no two reactions are ever the same. Euphoria gives you that true next generation experience. I had so much hype flowing out of my asshole for this game that I had to see a doctor. It was bad, but it never came out. Instead of seeing Indy throw Chinese gangsters off of cable cars, the Euphoria engine instead went out to be implemented into LucasArts' Star Wars The Force Unleashed game, where it served as a neat little trick for the devs to showcase and had little to no impact on gameplay. And the next-gen Indiana Jones game was locked away in storage, never to be seen again. Released until 2009, when it was kind of brought back as Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings. On Nintendo Wii. You know what? I don't care. It could be fun. And boy, am I ready. So here you have it, Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings, a game from 2009 that looks like it's from 2003 that's all about punching, grabbing, throwing, and most importantly, whipping. And how do you do all these things? So the story of this game is that Indiana Jones is going around the world looking for the Staff of Kings. Okay fine, I'll give more detail. So the story of this game is that in 1939, Indiana Jones is going around the world looking for the Staff of Kings. Come on, what do you want from me? It's a fucking Indiana Jones story. What, do you want me to tell you the parts you already know? Okay, well of course he's trying to get the thing before the bad guys do. Also there's a woman who he kinda likes, and there's some side characters that kinda help sometimes and other times get captured and Indy needs to save them. You happy? This is really just a cookie cutter Indiana Jones story. I could replace Staff of Kings with Staff of Ra, and it'd just as easily be Raiders of the Lost Ark. In this opening level we follow Indy as he traverses scary caves and swings over dangerous pits in order to track down a golden idol, only for it to get taken away from him by the bad guy as Indy narrowly gets away and escapes in a plane. Also this scene has no impact on the story at all other than to introduce the villain, a rival archaeologist with a thick European accent who knew Indiana Jones from his past. What this level also does is introduce the game's fucking gigantic paramount mountain of bullshit. I won't make it any secret that I hate motion controls. I hate them, with a passion. I think they belong in the depths of hell along with Adolf Hitler and DVD safety tabs. And it's not simply because I'm a lazy bastard, I fundamentally believe that more often than not, they remove you from the game playing experience rather than immerse you in it. 
Mostly it's because of unnecessary or poor implementation as well as wonky technology. And this game showcases all that shit. It starts with the little things, you know? This torch, for instance. Instead of picking it up and lighting it automatically, the game requires you to pick it up and mime starting a fire. Or maybe you're just miming cutting yourself. Whatever helps you feel more immersed. But then you run into a wild flock of spiders, and after Indiana Einstein here lights both himself and the bridge on fire... <sighs> The game tells you that to get the spiders off, you'll have to wave your arms around like a raver with Parkinson's. Wow! It's like I'm really covered in spiders right now! You better get used to this, because you'll be doing this a lot. And then when you escape the temple, you engage in some good old-fashioned fisticuffs. But there's no euphoria here, just the same canned animations. Over and over again. The fighting in this game leaves a little something to be desired. Like a different game. I desire a different game. Multiple times per level, you run into huge brawls with tons of guys, with your only objective being to kill them all. But as motion controls tend to make things, playing this game is a freaking dice roll. Sometimes it reads your moves right, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it mistakes it for something completely different. If you somehow managed to miss the whole motion control fad last generation, consider yourself lucky, because you avoided some of the most frustrating games ever made. And after all that, Indy flies away and ends up in Chinatown. But why would he go there, I hear you ask? So Wendy tries to meet up with a friend of his, but only manages to find the guy's teenage granddaughter. However, poor little short round Dina over here is instantly damsel in distress aside, so Indy of course has to go save her. We're also introduced to the game's shooting mechanics in this level, and by shooting mechanics, I mean it's completely on rails, you have infinite ammo, and it's cover based. Just like an arcade game. Immersion. And so Indy rescues the girl and they talk a bit about what's happening, while managing to avoid explaining anything about what's happening. So, when they came back, Grandpa hid me in a cabinet. I heard them dragging him away. Did they mention anything about the Jade Sphere? What's that? Can you get to somewhere safe? Hey, Dr. Jones, no time for love! I don't know if you're able to keep track of anything, but I played the damn thing and I can't even make sense of it. And then we end up on a pirate ship. Uh, Mr. Ford, I, uh, I think you're in the wrong soundstage. We're filming the Goonies here. Come on, get him, get him, get him, get him! So after Indy's done pillaging and swashbuckling, he finds his current MacGuffin, I guess, the Jade Sphere, sitting a bit too conveniently in a pile of cannonballs. And then he returns to the surface where he shoots guys out of the side of a San Francisco rail car. Not quite as cool as that Euphoria demo, is it? Watch out, Dr. Jones! Bad guys just got a whole lot smarter! <gasps> Something's going on here. I need to start looking for answers. What? Same place Kingston found this. Central America. Why? Who's Kingston? I don't understand! But true to his word, Indiana Jones goes to Central America to try and find, um... Whatever it is he's trying to find now. I'm trying to hire this boat, Miss... Maggie O'Malley. And you can't. That's my gear on the deck. Find another boat. Listen, sweetheart. No, you listen. Calling it, they're gonna make out. And she's gonna double cross him. But still fall for him. Probably. So what are you, uh, a triple agent? You're in Panama's where you'll really start doing the good old treasure hunter song and dance by raiding tombs. Or dungeons, as Indy puts it for some reason. This looks pretty shabby as far as dungeons go. <laughs> Might even be worse than my office. I hope you like platforming because you'll constantly be climbing on ledges and swinging across gaps and doing a bunch of death defying stunts that Indy would occasionally do in the movies. I get it though, it's a video game, you need that shit if you want to compete with this fucking poser. However, this would all be fine and dandy if the game frickin' worked when it was supposed to. The rope swinging prompts are super finicky and you have to stand in the exact right point to actually hit them sometimes, but other times it works just fine, no problem. Also, certain ledges will only allow you to pass if you crumble a certain piece in a certain way, meaning that standing Indy may not crumble it, but grabbing Indy will crumble it. Then Indy has to stand up again in order to jump the gap. And also the game makes you flail your arms again like an insane drummer when you're struggling to grab onto a ledge. Cause, you know, that accurately simulates climbing, right? Oh shit! I'll save you, Indy!
You also get a boss fight in this level against some kind of flame spitting pyro guy. We never had one before, but what the hell, now's as good a time to start as any, I guess. You literally just run around till the fire spitter runs out of fire to spit, then you whip him while he's guzzling down more oil. Super fun. After this, a bunch of other shit happens. You play ancient Mayan basketball, you solve some really dumb rolling ball puzzle, and you and your new lady friend flee the Germans and go to... So, headed for Istanbul, are we? Well, I guess they're going to Istanbul. Why the fuck not? Ugh, these decisions are so sudden and so insignificant that Indy might as well be saying shit! The Nazis are here in level 3. We need to go to level 4. And the rest of the game is pretty much this, a series of non sequiturs. You solve puzzles that don't make sense, you get in fights that come out of nowhere, people turn on you for no reason, people appear out of nowhere, you end up riding an oversized armored war elephant in the streets. Why? How? What? I don't know! It all makes zero sense and this takes away any investment players might have had left because you know, the gameplay's not gonna keep you coming back for more. Eventually, Indy actually gets to the Staff of Kings, which is literally just a stick. Also, his friend Kingston dies. The, the, the staff. <laughs> oh no, not Kingston. <sighs> and then the bad guy teleports everyone to like Hell or Waterworld or something, basically the same thing really. And you get an epic motorcycle chase to get the staff back. You control it like this, by the way. I'm having so much fun. And so in true Indiana Jones fashion, Indy pulls out a giant ass rocket launcher and decides to shoot the shit out of the guy. So you're swerving left and right, doing sick jumps and dodging meteors from the fucking sky, all while trying to blow up a magic Nazi. Good times. And then the staff turns into a snake. I don't even know. Well that's Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings. I think. I say that because I have no clue what the fuck happened in this game. It was all a jumbled mess of places and events strung together with shitty monotonous gameplay. You see, in each of the Indiana Jones movies, you get a scene or two that basically serves to lay out the plot. Literal exposition scenes. However, these never felt forced because the actual meat of the stories was piled onto the MacGuffin. When the underlying goal is clearly explained, it helps show the weight of everything else happening in the film. However, if those movies felt weighted, then this game is drifting off into fucking space! There isn't any kind of exposition scene in this game making everything feel spontaneous and meaningless. I couldn't even tell you what the Staff of Kings does. That's how pointless it is. And all this could be excusable if the game was fun. Honestly, I'd be able to lay off the story making zero sense if the gameplay was good enough, but as you've probably seen, this ain't the case. It's a horribly controlled, terribly paced game. If you hated Crystal Skull and what it did to the image of Indiana Jones, don't even go anywhere near this game because it'll make your skin crawl. In short, this game sucks and I hate it. And fuck these stupid fucking motion controls, god damn. But you should totally still buy it. Now hold that horse where I can see it. Why would I buy a game that you just spent a whole video shitting on? Well, the answer to that is really simple. Deep in the bowels of this game, hidden in the extras menu, is a little section called Extra Game Modes. 
and in this section is a little game called Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, arguably one of the best adventure games LucasArts ever made. And I know, I know, you can get this game at a bunch of different places like Steam or GOG or whatever. However, I did the fucking research! I delved the internet and I determined that the cheapest this game ever got on any website was 249 US on Steam, and that was in 2013. These days, you're not gonna find it under $3. Now, here's the reason why you should buy this game. I was able to walk into a GameStop and pick up Staff of Kings, this piece of fuck bullshit game used for $1.99. And right on the disc, completely accessible through either beating the game or using a cheat code, is the full version of Fate of Atlantis. When factoring in your regional sales tax along with whether or not sites like Steam currently have the game on sale, you're saving anywhere from 27 to 65%. You're welcome. So yeah, there you go. If you want to play Fate of Atlantis and you have a Wii or Wii U lying around somewhere, it's a much better value to get this shitty game than to download it from wherever. So boom. Consumerism. Also, there's a co-op mode. Uh, 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 uh.